Hey everyone, it's Julie Boya here. So excited for another one of my wonderful self-love interviews. And today I've got my friend, Jennifer Robinson. Welcome, Jennifer. Yay. Jennifer, I'm so happy that we are doing this interview together. We were introduced through our this beautiful organization called Mompreneurs, and that has brought many wonderful women into my life. And I am so excited that you are open to speaking with me today because your business, Butterfly Beauties, mm -hmm. is actually built truly on a foundation of self-love and kindness and gratitude and all the wonderful things that I, you know, am trying to share with my messaging. Mm -hmm. And I love that, you know, we're so aligned in so many beautiful ways. So I'd love to kind of get the conversation started. If you could share a little bit about your story and a little bit about how Butterfly Beauties came to be. Okay, great. Thanks for having me, first of all. I'm really honored to be here. I'm a little nervous, not used to doing the interviews, so I'm putting some self-love on myself today to just get in the zone and um, wanting to share with you all. So my story um, starts about eight years ago. Um, when I went through a relationship breakup of a marriage of 19 years. Um, that marriage was someone that I married when I was a teenager. And uh, the marriage was um, one that was full of, there was a lot of control and emotional turmoil at times. And, um, you know, in society, we get married, we have kids, I had three beautiful kids, but somewhere along the way, I truly lost myself. Um, they approached my 40s. I found myself in a place that was very depressing. I felt numb and didn't feel like I wanted to be here anymore. Uh, having those kids, thank God, um, helped to keep me around. Um, and I walked away from a marriage of 19 years, which was one of the hardest things I ever did. And there was a lot of guilt. Um, and I was terrified that I was going to mess my kids up. So, Fast forward about a year after that marriage, I started to put myself out there a little bit and I started dating and I met someone who actually is my husband now. Um, and he was wonderful and loving and would tell me every day how beautiful I was. And I thought I'm in this great place in my life, but actually I cried many times subconsciously. I was trying to sabotage the relationship. And it wasn't until I found out through some therapy um, why that was happening. It was because I was not used to that. It felt very foreign to me and uncomfortable. Um, and it was from him that one day he turned to me and said, you know, maybe you should try turning to art to help with your healing. And I loved art when I was in high school and I hadn't touched it for 20 years. And I thought, okay, why not? I'll give it a try. And I had already dabbled in some coloring and I had gotten into meditation towards the last year or two of my um, marriage, which I knew that mindfulness was really important for me. But I struggled with, with meditating. Um, I'm a lot better at it now, but coloring and sitting down to illustrate really, um, now I know from the things that I've learned, gave me a lot of benefit to the meditation and it was something that I could be very present too. Um, and so I started that. I started drawing um, and I started crying and I would draw and cry every week and not knowing what I was going to sit down to. And every week that I sat down to draw these butterflies that were women that were very vulnerable um, came out of me. And the early illustrations, the women or the butterflies were very tormented and wounded looking. And as I healed, they became more stronger and powerful looking. Um, so that was the start of it about eight years ago. And I was writing as well at the same time, doing some poetry and lots of tears with all of that. And it really helped me to heal. And I kind of just shelved it for a while. There was something very personal to me. And then one day a friend saw drawing. And she's like, you need to do something with me. Um, and that was kind of the start of it. That was about six years ago. And Fast forward to now, I mean, in those six years, it was taking my uh, pencil sketches that were just crude drawings and my writings of poetry and such. And at first, 
So initially it was a, a coloring book. Um, and along that way, I learned a whole lot of the business stuff. I had to learn how to draw an Adobe Illustrator to make it professional so that it was um, a good product. Um, and when that book launched about five or six years ago, got on Amazon, and then I never told anybody. I think I sold to a couple of family members. Oh. And, and my self-worth and self-doubt really kicked in, like, who am I? And I sat on it for about a year or so, maybe more. And then I got more involved in this wonderful uh, membership group, The Mompreneur. And I didn't really tell anyone that this book I had created, and the more I um, connected with other women, and the more I meditated, and the more I started to get present with myself and start to love myself more, I literally had a dream and woke up instantly, and I knew that the book was supposed to be a journal and it wasn't even about me. It was about the other women and the girls. And I wanted to give them hope because I had come to another side where I'd met this wonderful man and we had gotten married. Now we had blended our family of six kids and like they all love each other and it's amazing. And I was like, I needed someone back then to give me that hope. So I instantly started revising the journal and it's now, um, a combination of the illustrations of the butterflies, the poetry, but I've put in a whole bunch of um, self-love worksheets, just conscious journaling and um, affirmations um, as well. And those are all the things that I use for me to get to where I am now and that I still use every day. We're all, you know, on a journey all the time, I think, um, evolving. So that's kind of where it started. And here we are seven years later and finally like really launching this yeah. week. Yeah. This is so exciting. I it's really interesting. Uh thank you for your story because I didn't actually know the story before we spoke, which I think mm -hmm. is, makes this kind of fun because I'm hearing it for the first time too. Yeah. What I heard in your story is, you know, when you first met your now husband, mm -hmm. is you were really having a lot of trouble with receiving Absolutely. I didn't recognize at the time, but absolutely. I can, I can see it now and I, but I did not see it then. And to me, like receiving and self-love are, the, they're in the same category, in the same yeah. breath. And it's this, you know, you went, you said you went through such, you had a 19 year relationship where mm -hmm. you were shut down from receiving. I mean, if you're being emotionally abused, if you're, you know, it like, you're not going to be able to receive anything because you're protecting yourself. So yeah. I think what I love about your story is a lot of women will choose to, you know, stay in that place of not being able to receive and then the wall just gets bigger and bigger and you went the other way. Yeah. So you have yeah. the courage to say, I want to move forward and you have someone, it does help. Of course, when we have people who care about us and support yeah. us, but it only takes one person, right? You mentioned yeah. with your now husband who said, start, drawing start using your art again yeah yeah and he, he's my biggest advocator but it took a long time for me to even um accept his words of encouragement i mean it was a year of working on myself before i even met him um i had a friend a best friend and she loved me so much that she saw what i went through and she was like oh heck no like you need to work on yourself and um I mean, when I left that marriage, I had already committed to myself that I didn't care if I was going to be alone for the rest of my life. I just wanted peace. I just wanted peace in my life. And my kids were a big part of um, my focus. But this friend gave me a book, and it was by Dr. Phil, which made me laugh. I'm like, a Dr. Phil book. And it was called Love Smart. And I read that book from front to back. And I took notes and I journaled and I learned a lot about myself and a lot about the way we think and a little about loving myself. And it seemed corny at the time, but I really believe that that hard work that I did um, and releasing a lot, I really believe that it attracted the husband that I'm married to now into my life because um, I know now that how you love yourself is teaching others how to love you. And if I hadn't taken those steps, he wouldn't have come into my life, wouldn't have met someone like him or wouldn't be able to even receive him. And even though we got together and it became this beautiful relationship, it still was a lot of work. Um, and then there's still times, there's still days where 
I shut myself down and I'm like, okay, but now I'm aware. Coming aware was really important to be able to accept that love. You said something so incredibly powerful and I'm going to repeat it, which is Mm -hmm. when we, it's how we love ourselves. That's how we teach others to love us. And that's, your journey is so actually incredibly powerful because there are many women and men who are in relationships that they feel like they can't leave or Mm -hmm. get out of because of children. Yeah. And it's a very, it takes so much courage to leave. It's easier to stay most Mm -hmm. of the time. Even if things aren't going well. So you had that incredible courage. And then the part that I think about your story that is also extremely powerful is that you took time to change the way that you were showing up in the world, that you were thinking before you started even being open to attracting a new relationship. Because what happens is, and you, you even said it is like, we can fall back into our old patterns so easily. Absolutely. And if we don't do the work though, if we don't give ourselves space and time to do the work, then we just basically marry the same person again, which I know has happened to people that I love and care about. Yeah. I've seen it too. Yeah. So you are, you're really, I'm so glad you're sharing your story in this way because I think this is the beginning for you of really helping a lot of people um, through your work, through your creativity and through your story to have courage to make a decision that they might not be able to make otherwise and to have a tool to help them when they're feeling in their darkest times. So uh, you spoke a little bit about your journal, but can you, can we just talk a little bit more in depth? It's got coloring pages. Like, tell me a little bit more in depth of how, what this actual physical book looks like, or even you can show it to me if you want. Oh, so, I'll show you a quick peek. Yeah, yeah please do. So this is the, um, the healing journal. Okay. It, it's infused with a mixture of, um, there's 65 pages. Um, there are um, illustrations that you can color. Um, so they, like I say, some of them start when I felt very wounded. So this is like one of them that one of the very first illustrations I did. Oh, wow. So even though this illustration connects to my story, um, I have a, had a girlfriend that bought the book and for her, that illustration, the fist and the chain to her, that's her anxiety that holds her back from doing the things that she Ooh. wants to do in her life. So although it was, when you said that, yeah, personal to me. Powerful. It was beautiful that she saw in another way. So, and it helped her. Um, and then along, of course, the journey, meditation was huge for me. So as we go through the um, journal, the illustrations of the women get stronger. Um, and then I have added some mood trackers. I'm trying to take one here. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if everyone's sure what a mood tracker is. So this is an example of one of them. And what you would do is it's got 30 petals on it meaning like 30 days in a month. And then you would pick a color of what your mood would be. Oh. And you'd start on day one, which would be- Not seen petals. this. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Jennifer, and, we have to share this with more people. This is amazing. Yeah, and then what it does is- on the other side of the page too? Pardon me? The other side of the page says- Oh, and this is another one. This is five things that make me beautiful. Oh, so so it's not just the coloring. Um, it's got my poetry in it. It's got- conscious journaling questions to ask yourself like what are some things that I judge about myself what can I do to take better care of myself the things that we don't always sit down and quiet to just listen to and um, get connected with our heart because if you can connect with your heart then you can do anything I mean that's that's where the, the power comes from but I think sometimes women get stuck like I know I did like where do you start where do you start and then you just need to start with one simple thing. Um, it could be as simple as what you're putting in your body. Um, we had some difficulties this year with my son, who's a teenager, and there were a lot of mental health issues this year. And we went through a difficult time with um, mental health, and there was some hospitalization involved. And when all of that was happening, I felt like completely out of control. And the only thing I could do, I realized, couldn't control his feelings. I couldn't control the outcome. I couldn't control what the doctors were going to say and what was going to happen. 
my husband said, what can I do for you? And I just said, bring me my hard boiled eggs and my apples and my walnuts. Because the only control I had in that moment was what I was putting in my body. And I knew that that was the only little piece that I could take to put myself first. Because if I wasn't taking care of me, I wasn't going to have the energy to be there for him when he was going through all the difficulties he was having. Um, and I know I've had some people say to me, well, you read this book now and you do all these things. But seven, eight years ago, even before that, like, I was a hot mess, like a hot mess. And it just started with one simple thing for me. It was meditation. Um, I was listening to podcasts um, a few years ago, and this stuck with me so much. They talked about chaos and order, and they related it to having difficulty in your life and starting with one simple thing. And view it like your bedroom. Your bedroom is a complete mess. Yeah. Um, and where do you start? You know, you've got clothes on the floor, right. your drawers, your dresser's a mess, your closet's a mess, and you need to know you need to clean it up, just like your bedroom is your life. But where do you start? You can either pull everything out, and some people do it that way, and throw everything in the middle of the bed, and know it's going to be painful and a mess, and you hate it, and as you go one sock at a time, you rip everything apart and a couple hours later it looks worse but you know eventually you're going to get back to this beautiful clean organized yeah. room yeah some people do that they just jump that's me yeah but yeah and but another way is to simply start with i'm going to start with my socks and underwear drawer yeah i'm going to marie condo that drawer and i'm going to make it nice and tidy and i've got that one little beautiful drawer the rest of the room is a mess but that one little so I think that's really important with self-love and taking care of ourselves. Start with one little piece. And for me, in that moment, in that time with my son, it was, I just needed to have some healthy food in my body so that, you know, I could be there for him. And that was all I had control over. So I try and remember that. And then also honoring yourself and loving yourself like where you are right now, you know. In that, this moment. Yeah, that is so exactly why I did this project is mm -hmm. about, so I was, I knew, can you remember how you said it kind of came to you in a dream, what you needed to do with your journal and share it? Absolutely. So this project came to me in a dream and it was like, I knew that this had to be done this 30 days of self love, which, uh, you know, that's, that was just to put together in a package. These interviews are going to be shared, uh, many times in many different ways. And I'm actually my, real exciting passion is to continue doing these videos and sharing them uh, through podcasts and all kinds of wonderful ways long after the first 30 days are done. But it was about, um, you know, I need to listen and learn from other people what to do for self-love because I'm searching for answers. I'm not exactly sure what to do right now, but every time I speak to someone new, I have a new way of looking at things. And it is like, one thing at a time. I'm going to take one thing from one interview and I'm going to make that shift in my life. And I am feeling a real shift. It's, it's been really neat. Um, just, and like you came to me through this connection in mompreneurs. I didn't even know your work before this. We had met, but you hadn't really told me what you do maybe. So yeah, I was working on myself for it still. <laughs> there you go. So yeah. here we are. And you know, you're, I'm excited to order my copy of the journal. I actually um, downloaded one of the worksheets from your website before our call because I really loved it. It's a self-esteem worksheet that mm -hmm. I'm going to use with my daughter. Uh, a lot mm -hmm. of people know that my daughter, we deal with a lot of challenges with her. We homeschool out of, originally it was out of trauma um, due to anxiety and panic, but now we homeschool out of choice. Uh, but we're still working on uh, ways to deal with anxiety and stress when they come up. And your worksheet seemed like a really beautiful way to just introduce that to her. And um, we talked a little bit about this this homeschooling journey. Yeah. This is this something that's new for you as well? It is, yeah. So um, part of the journey of this year with everything that we went through in the spring is I started homeschooling my son in September. He's 16. Um, and He's, his journey has been one of anxiety since he was a little boy. 
at six years old, we were sent from a crisis center to talk to a psychiatrist. And, and it's been one thing after another. And I've been his biggest advocate. And I've been blessed to be able to have some amazing teachers in his life. Um, I, by grade two, grade three, I was able to get into small class sizes of only eight kids where it was um, self-contained classes. Typically, they were for you to be there for one year and they um, then roll you back into your, your home class again. He got to stay four years. Um, and then we moved to Fergus, a new town, very small, and they just come out with a brand new class with, which had only 16 kids, but they were grade four to eight. And he got accepted and that was wonderful. And then high school. Right. And um, he would be uh, in grade 11 officially this year. And he went to high school for grade nine and 10 with fully integrated in um, very little support. We tried to work with the school. Um, and it's difficult because he's, um, as all our kids are, unique in his way. And only a mom and a dad can really understand what your child needs. And I wasn't listening. Um, he'd been giving me lots of messages about not wanting to be there. And I kept, my ego kept telling me he needs to do this. This is how he's going to grow. He's going to have to deal with it. He's going to have to learn to get stronger and tougher. And the more I pushed um, and tried to shut down those messages that I was getting from him, I know now it was my ego. What's everyone, what other people going to think? Like, how is he going to be able to function in society in this world? Yep. I don't make him go to high school like everybody else. Yep. He's not going to be strong enough. And um, it wasn't until things got really bad. And that was triggered by his only one real true best friend that moved away. His family moved away in February. And that was his biggest connection, keeping him there. And he started down a really rough path. And I had to finally just, it was meditation and listening to myself and, and my heart and saying, okay, Jen screw everybody else he's my kid and it doesn't matter how well he can read write his math or whatever if he doesn't love himself he doesn't have self-worth self-esteem which he didn't and he can't communicate he can't self-regulate his emotions it doesn't matter what his grades are at how is he going to be able to go in society and function and i i really i believe that was a big lesson for me as well in self-love right there in front of me um and i had to just quiet and listen and turn off all the voices in my head which was outside society voices and i'm like okay what like my heart was telling me to just wrap my arms around him and he's he's six feet tall 200 pounds and you know what as teenagers they still are the same when they're four and five they still need it and it's only now it's been a month and a half and he saying things to me that I never hear him say where he's honoring and recognizing, you know, hey, mom, everything that happened back in the spring, I know it was me. I was angry. I didn't know how to deal with my feelings. Thank you for listening to me. You know, he was really triggered a lot. He heard about that story, that that boy who was killed in Hamilton and it really affected him and he just thanked me for listening to him. So that was a big moment for me to realize, okay, I don't need to listen to anybody else but myself. And it's our journey, his journey, because he has to go through pain at times, and I have to watch it and can be there beside him. Um, and then my journey, and um, that's been like huge lessons for me. So this uh, self love thing is like yeah. every single day. Yeah. You know? I I listen to you, and I I literally feel my emotions like rushing back from what we went through with yeah my daughter and how. I was forcing her to go to school and she was yeah. like telling me in very clear words that she yeah. could not do this. And I was so worried about, you know, what is everyone going to think if I don't send my kid to school? And I do think, you know, yeah, for sure. Self-love has to part is definitely a part of that journey, but it, I did not get there <laughs> for a while. Yeah. I, mean, I was angry for a long time mm -hmm. when we first started, you know, when she stopped going to school, I was really angry about it for a really long time. Uh, mm -hmm. cause that's not what I had the expectations I had right for 
for her, for me, for our family. And kind of like what you're saying, it's like, you know, well, if he's not going to school, if he's not going to do this, he's not going to turn out to be a, you know, well-rounded individual, which who the heck that means anyway. But then it's like, wait a minute, if our kids cannot deal with anxiety and stress and emotional intelligence, well, that actually to me is, is a more serious thing that is not being addressed in our school system very well yet. I think we're making small strides. I think mm-hmm. people like you with the work you're doing, I think you said you've, you've got some more ideas to share things for girls and teens and tweens. And I think that's going to be really important. And maybe we'll include young men in there inspired by your son, perhaps. Mm-hmm. But uh, we're, you know, this, this ability for self-love and kindness and all these things are, are great things to teach our children. So um I just want to hear from you today. What do you do? Just what are a couple of things that you do personally uh, for self-love kind of throughout the week? So meditation is huge for me. I meditate every day. Um, Well, there are some days I miss it. And um, I'll tell you the days that I miss it, I do notice. Um, But even if it's only taking a minute or two, and I don't have time to do that 20 minute meditation, which um, I know is really important and I can talk about a little about that with the brain. Um, I will at least when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do when I rise, I go, I'm awake. I'm still here. I'm here to make a difference um, for another day in, in someone's life, maybe, or my own. I'm here. So I really, really speak to gratitude a lot. I used to think it was kind of hokey, but it makes a huge difference. So I do, I will always touch my heart and connect myself. Um, so more than that. Yeah. I'm I you to... off because do you want to know what I say first thing in the morning? So I don't think you knew this, but I say, no. thank you for this gift of the, of another day and the opportunity to be of service to others and make a difference in this world. <laughs> I've like never heard anybody no, say, like, girl, you're almost saying the same words. Like that's just, Oh, so amazing. Um, so the meditation, the waking up with gratitude, um, is there anything else that you personally do for self-love that you want to share? So I try to end my day. So I mean, throughout the day, I do, so part of my self-love is I drink as much water as I can. And it's a very simple thing. Um, I was actually just, yeah, yeah, me too. I was just at a Tony Robbins, Rachel Hollis. There was nine speakers oh, yes. at conference this week. And every speaker up there talked about the importance of drinking water. Okay. Um, and it's something that I do often and I know it sounds like a, such a simple thing, but I think hydrating ourselves and I try to eat clean, but I am a self-professed dessert lover. And it's one of the things that's on my Instagram account because I used to give myself a lot of guilt when I eat sweets. Right. I love dessert and I'm like, the calories not, you should eat the sugar. And this year I've decided that no. I love dessert. It gives me this huge dopamine rush, and I'm not going to um, give that up. I'm so I'm I I'm letting myself enjoy some things that really mean a lot to me, and dessert is one of them. And so that's only once a week. Um, the other thing I do is I color and I draw. Of course, I I was hoping you were going to say yeah. those things. Yes. <laughs> and, awesome. and so for the coloring is really interesting, and um, I was doing that before I ever started illustrating. They have done research on it, and they have um, shown that there is huge benefit to coloring. Um, It gets you in your mind to focus state. Um, So someone who struggles with meditating, coloring can give some huge benefit to that. You get so focused. I tend to put on music. Um, I like to pick music that's relaxing but has binaural beats in them. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Binaural beats. It's spelled B-I-N-A-U-R-A-L beats which are different, um, I'm going to get it right, uh, sounds that produce uh, different brain waves in our brain. Yeah, it affects and, your brain waves differently. Yeah. yeah, and so I listen to, um, Delta is for sleep, but I listen to Theta yeah. when I'm coloring and when I'm journaling. That's journaling awesome. is huge as well because um, I might use conscious journaling where I'm prompted with questions like I had in the journal, but sometimes I just free flow journal. And I'll write whatever comes out of my mind. And that I do at the end of the day. Okay. And sometimes I'm writing really nasty things because I'm so frustrated. I'm letting out anger and stuff. And I just need to get it out. Yeah. And 
I often will find that as I'm writing, like I was angry at so and so, I'll end up journaling after, like you know, maybe this is what they were seeing, they were seeing, and it really helped me to process. And I might go back and look at that week that and go, wow, you know, that really triggered me, and it helps me to grow as a person. So coloring, journaling is huge. Um, and another thing I do to get in state is music. I use music a lot. Um, so you have like so many beautiful self-love activities that you do during a week. And I'm sure you've worked your way up to one, adding one at a time, like you said, if you could inspire people to make one change, so change one habit, do one thing differently or stop doing something, Mm -hmm. what would one thing be for you? One thing would be gratitude. Um, A simple thing that I started when I first started practicing gratitude was I would write it on a little piece of paper, one, thing and then I would fold it up and I put it in a little gratitude jar gratitude jar I love yeah. that and then jar. and it might have been really something simple like I like my socks today they're really cute like just something simple because I was in such a low state and then I would go through that jar at the end of the month and just start pulling them randomly out and it would make me so thankful and grateful for the amazing things in my life and I find that if you look for the small things of gratitude, um, it, it trains your brain to be aware of those little things. So it's not the big things. I find when I say I'm so grateful for my family, my health, all that, it's when I see the little things that makes the biggest difference because then it's training us to look for those small little things. So yeah, gratitude would be the thing that I would start with if I had, didn't have anything else. I'm so excited that you shared that because actually no one shared specifically about doing a gratitude jar. So that's great. Another idea that's going to resonate with someone and they're going to start and it's going to make a difference for them. I have loved our time together. I, I actually am excited that this is the beginning of something between you and I, I think there's yes. a lot that we're going to be able to do together. Uh, where do we find you? What's your website? So my website is butterflybeauties.com. Co Butterfly Beauties Co, um, and then I have an Instagram account and Facebook, okay. and they are both Butter- Butterfly Beauties Self Care. Self Care. Okay. Mm-hmm. We will, of course, all the links will be shared, and then your journal can be purchased through your website. But is it on Amazon as well? It is. It's on all over Amazon.com.ca.uk, so you can go through Amazon. Okay. Um, and you can choose to purchase it that way, or you can purchase it directly from the website. Um, when you purchase it from the website, you will get a little inspirational message written inside the cover from me, and it will be gift wrapped in yep. um, eco-friendly uh, craft paper with a little bow on top. So you can actually, if you wanted to purchase okay. it for someone else, yeah, you could put their address in and send it to them. That's a great idea. And as an author myself, I know that I like it when people order directly from me because I can add that personalized message, uh, even though my book is available through all the channels. So that's so wonderful. So butterflybeauties.co and we'll find you on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you so, so much for sharing your heart with us today. It was absolutely wonderful. Thanks for having me, Julie. Thank you.